While in London, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry made a rhetoric suggestion that the only way for Syria to avoid a U.S. attack would be for it to place all of its chemical weapons under international supervision within a week. This was immediately followed by the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who promised to start working with Damascus to realize this idea. So right now, the Russian proposal is welcomed by Syria, Germany, the United Kingdom and even the United States is on board and it seems like a great catastrophe has been averted and it's all thanks to the ingenious Russians. Although this might be a genuine exit strategy for the United States, the practicality of this proposal is much more complex. This is a Caspian report by Mishirvan. Lavrov's first move would be to get Syria to sign and ratify the Chemical Weapons Convention. This agreement effectively outlaws the production, stockpiling and use of chemical weapons and their precursors. The idea is that Syria would transfer control of its chemical weapons to UN inspections, who would then neutralize the chemical agents. Now, one of the problems of this proposal are the logistical complications. According to estimates, Syria has about 1,000 tons of chemical weapons stockpiled and dispersed over 50 hidden different locations. That's a lot of territory and a lot of tons for UN teams to cover. Plus, most of these locations are in places the government has control, others are in rebel-controlled territories, and some are right in between battle zones. UN inspection teams are simply not prepared to secure this many weapons in the middle of a war zone. It would require more than a hundred experts accompanied by special forces and spread thinly throughout the country. So obviously UN inspectors will face enormous dangers of being caught up in a skirmish or an ambush. In addition to this, the inspectors would likely become targets for the rebel faction. Think about it, if the rebels want to ensure a US strike on the Syrian government, the rebels will have to somehow derail the UN mission and thereby recreate the conditions of a US intervention. Also, even if the UN teams manage to get to the locations, how would you transport so much cargo in war conditions? And if you're thinking about destroying the stockpiles on site, that would take even longer. This isn't as simple as a paper shredder. Nerve agents like sarin can be rendered harmless by adding liquid sodium hydroxide. Others like mustard gas can be destroyed by adding alkyne water. The point is that chemical weapons is a very broad term and every agent requires a different method of neutralization. To give you an idea of just how difficult the neutralization process is, Libya started the destruction of its chemical weapons back in 2004. It's been 9 years and so far the country has only managed to destroy 40% of its weapons. Syria has many more tons of chemical weapons than Libya, so it could take much longer. If you take the reality of this mission into consideration, which countries can you envision contributing their experts and special forces to such a dangerous mission? There are only two real candidates, Russia and the United States. The reality is that this isn't going to be a quick and easy operation and everyone knows it. So never mind the deadline of one week, even if everything went perfectly according to plan, this mission could not even be accomplished in a month's time. The thing is, Russia knew all about the impracticalities of the mission when it proposed it and the US knew it too when it welcomed the initiative. That's why Washington set the deadline for one week. They wanted it to fail, so they could continue the original plan that is to strike Syria. Now, the Russian strategy here is to regain its global position, which it lost when the Soviet Union collapsed. And what better way to remind people of the new improved Russian superpower than by recreating a Cold War-like confrontation with the US. Syria is the ultimate stage for Russia to flex its muscles. It's of course much more complex than that because Russia's desire to reshape its image as a reborn superpower is tied to the establishment of the Eurasian Union. 
If you follow the news, you might have noticed some interesting shifts in the alliances of former Soviet Union states and how all of this contributed to the strengthening of the Eurasian Union. I will be talking more about this in the next Caspi report. Now, by putting the Syrian proposal forward, Moscow has appealed to the worldwide public opinion, which strongly opposes any kind of military intervention in Syria. So the Russians have definitely scored some points here. Because for months, Moscow was isolated in Europe because of its position on Syria. And now, Russia is perceived as a voice of reason in a region of turmoil. In return, Russia has displayed the US as a weak and indecisive country that is incapable of leading a coalition. The Germans, the French and British governments have already positively responded to the Russian proposal and again this plays right into the hands of Moscow which basically splits the Europeans from the United States and thereby isolates Washington. On the other hand, the Russians have just given the United States a genuine exit strategy. And given the fact that the vast majority of Americans oppose a military strike against Syria, it would be a smart thing to extend the UN mission deadline indefinitely and thereby choose the exit strategy and prevent an attack altogether. However, by going for this option, the US will only be empowering the status of Russia as a superpower and in the long term this will be a serious blow to US influence in Europe and Asia. So Obama either figures out a new creative solution or he has a very difficult choice to make. This was a Caspian report by Mishirvan. So take care and so on.